Cindy. I'm Lauren. We're here today and we are going to do the inside out book tag. So question number one is what book brings you the most joy? And I know this is really shocking, but mine is Harry Potter and I'm counting the entire series as one book. And I have hair in my face. I'm counting the entire series as one book with or without hair in my face. Lindy's is also Harry Potter. <laughs> Just love the series. Best book ever written. I'm weird. I like A Wrinkle in Time. It is amazing and it's weird. People like me. That's true. <laughs> Question number two is, what book grossed you out the most? Lindy, what book grossed you out the most? Rotten Ruin by Jonathan Mowbray. <laughs> that book is so good, though! It I is good, it. but no, it didn't gross me out in a bad way. It just grossed me out. It is gross. The I won't tell you what happens. If you haven't read it, I will not tell you what happens <laughs> in the bottling plant, but they don't bottle yeah. orange soda. <laughs> they don't. It's gross. But inventive. It's inventive. But mine is not a YA book. It's actually the Dresden Files series by Tim Butcher. There we go. It's an adult level series, uh, and there are some really kind of graphic parts. It's not over the top for what the story is, but it's still pretty gross. Mine is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I don't have a copy of that book here <laughs> because I only made it halfway through that book. I had such <laughs> high hopes for that book. I really, really wanted to like it. I opened to a page and Darcy gives his first really terrible proposal and, <laughs> and Elizabeth Bennet turns him down and then kicks him across the room. It was epic. And then I read the book and there's a scene when Charlotte has already been bitten by a zombie and they're like eating soup and there's a boil on the side of her face and it bursts into the soup and is oozing oh. and then she eats it with oh. relish and then, and then she tries to go defecate in the corner and Elizabeth has to like kindly like move her away so that nobody notices that she tried to take a dump in the corner. <laughs> no. If you guys have seen the movie, if it's not that level of gross, let me know because I would like to watch this movie. <laughs> but I'm not willing to watch people eat their own face boils or poop in corners. <laughs> there is a line and it's eating your own face goo and pooping in corners. <laughs> that is the line. We're done. So question number three is what book scared you more than anything? Well, I don't really get scared by books anymore, um, but I do remember as a child I had a really overactive imagination and I read this Goosebumps book. There was a kid who made a friend and then learned that the friend was a ghost and, um, and the friend didn't know he was a ghost and I spent like months going like, what if I'm a ghost and I don't really know it. Cause <laughs> I was like, one of your friends is a ghost, but like, what if you're a ghost? Right, because I was like eight and that was scary. For me, um, as a kid, it would have been Night of the Living Dummy. There's um, a review of it on our blog. I'll leave a link down below um, that I did rereading it as an adult. But that one scared the crap out of me because I think we can all agree <laughs> that any kind of doll thing that comes to life is utterly terrifying. As an adult, I would say the most recent one I read that really, really freaked me out is Bird Box. It's by Josh Mallerman or Mailerman. I'm not really sure how to say his last name, but basically it's told in two time frames. One when this girl is probably like late teens, early twenties, and one that's four years later. And so something has happened. There's some kind of creatures or a sickness or something. If you see it, it makes you go crazy and you kill yourself. So like everybody has to walk around all the time with their blindfold on and they can't look at anything. And if you do, you will go crazy and kill yourself. And so you're really terrified anytime like they have to go outside blindfolded. Seen at the well, I'm not gonna tell you what happened, but it's so freaking scary. So for me, I don't really get scared by books anymore either. But a couple of years ago, I read this book called The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Stroud. And it was a ghost story. And it really freaked me out because it was just this one big haunted house where blood was dripping from the walls and it was just scary back then. But I re I reread it and it wasn't that scary now. Question number four is what book made you cry the hardest? Now, I personally don't cry a lot of books. I don't think any of us do. I cry at everything. I cry at sappy commercials on TV. There's a Duracell commercial that's out <laughs> right now about this old man that gets a hearing aid so he can hear his granddaughter when she cries in the crib and I weep. But books don't make me cry that much because they're not as immediate. It takes a while to read them, but there are books that I cried to. So I have two on my list. The first one is The Schwa Was Here by Neil Schusterman. I really didn't think I was going to like this book. There is a scene in the middle with a billboard that like I read it and you see what's coming before The Schwa does. 
and I just, I cried. I literally cried on this one. Most of the time I just get sad, but this one made me cry. The other one is not surprising. I don't have the pretty cover version, but Tiffios, The Fault in Our Stars. Of course I cried because kids die in it. So I don't really need to say anything else about that because it's Tiffios. I've, I've never cried while reading a book. I have never cried, but I picked a book that made me sad and that was Mockingjay. There was an event at the end that happened and it's sad. Just that really sad. Would, that would make me sad too. It made yes. me sad. Mine is actually the same as Becky's, um, and for the same scene. It's like so, you know, this kid has the schwa, he has like this one desire in his whole life, and he totally fails, and it's just heartbreaking. So that was And the sad thing is he doesn't even have that desire when the book starts. But yes. it's like the investigation into his weirdness that makes him have this desire and yes. realize for the first time that, like, how weird he is as compared to other people. Mm -hmm. And he wants this one thing. He does. And it goes, like, all the way back to when he was a little, little kid. And so it's, like, this whole, his whole life. And he hasn't really, you know, he's tried not to think about it much. And then, you know, these other kids start thinking about it. And he's like, you know, I just really want this one thing. And then he totally fails. And it's Ridiculous. Got wrenching. It's like, got wrenching. stick the it's knife in and twist. It's ridiculously sad. So, yeah, that mm -hmm. one made me cry for sure. Neil Schusterman made me sad. Question number five, the final question. Which book made you mad? Which book pissed you off? Which book, when you got to the end, did you probably not really, because all of us really like collecting books, did not actually throw against the wall, but really, really wanted to throw against the wall? <laughs> Mindy. So, for me, it's Allegiance. You're not alone. I actually didn't have a problem with the end. I hated the end. Like, this was all for nothing. <laughs> This whole series was for nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's gonna be okay. Why? It ruined my view of the whole series. <laughs> my only thing that pissed me off at the end of this book is that her brother doesn't die. And I don't feel like telling you somebody doesn't die is a big plot reveal because that kid, he oh, he needed to totally die. He needed to died. die. He's he going, should have. He is going on my list for our top five for next month of... Well, I guess this month when we're posting, he's going on my top five of characters I want to drown. I don't really have any books that I can remember that made me super angry. Um, usually when I start to not like a book, I just put it down and I don't finish it. It's like this horrible taste in your mouth where it's like, I need to have a mint. You know, like, I'm going <laughs> to go read a good book now just to kind of make up for that one. But I don't have any that I'm just like, I can't believe this! You know? I do. Okay, so currently I am like almost over with reading The Madman's Daughter and I really, really wanted to like this book, but I just spent like half an hour explaining to these two why did, I can't <laughs> stand two of the three main characters of this book. I really, minutes. something like that. So like, I really <laughs> want to punch the main character in the face often. I really, really want to punch Edward in the face. He's a whiny little twit. But I looked at the reviews for the next two books and the stuff that happens doesn't make me like anybody anymore. But the one, and I hate to... Maze Runner. That series pissed me off. <laughs> she loves it. I, I would show it. you the book cover right now, but I don't have it because I gave it to her so she could get it signed by James Nasher, who's, by the way, is a lovely human being. He is hilarious. He's sweet. But the love triangle that happened in that book, I cannot stand his reasons for, I don't even understand his reasons for picking the girl he picked over the girl that I liked. So I only- You didn't like her? No, I couldn't stand I her. her. No, because his whole reasons for not picking girl A was like, oh, she lied to me and kept stuff. But when you find out the reasons behind why she lied and kept stuff from him, they totally made sense. And then girl two is like, oh, I like her so much better. She's so much more refreshing than girl A because she's so real. And then you hit the end of, and I was willing to accept her, but you hit the end of book two and suddenly it's like, Ugh, this girl's suddenly keeping stuff for me too. You, It's like, I don't read or watch Game of Thrones, but I feel like it's how Game of Thrones fans feel. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Only like half of them make it out of the room. That's our list for the Inside Out tag. So let us know what your answers would be down below. Let us know what you think on our answers. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Lindy doesn't cry at books. Dad, Lindy has no feelings. I didn't used to cry at books, but then I it's had It's true, children, I have no feelings. So, 